Okay, welcome to uh, this World Drum Club lesson on soloing. Uh, this is going to be kind of about drum soloing, conga soloing in this particular case, but this applies to any of you musicians out there who are looking for some tips to make your solos more interesting uh, for you and for the people listening. I'm Kalani Das, your host and instructor at World Drum Club. And I'll be giving you a few pointers and a few things you can practice to improve your soloing. I'm going to be talking about drum soloing in this context, but really the rhythmic concepts that I'm going to be introducing to you are applicable to any instrumental music or even scat singing if you're a vocalist. All right, so the first thing about soloing is basically you want to phrase you're playing, right? One of the biggest mistakes that uh, I see amateurs making, including myself, I'm totally including myself in all of this, is that we just go in with guns blazing, trying to fill up all the space. And if you, if you fill up all the space, there's no contrast. There's nothing to give the listener a sense of an arc or phrase, right? So here's what I would recommend that you do. Imagine, and this is especially true for drummers, people that don't have to breathe to play their instruments. Take a cue from a wind player and think about phrasing like you would, like you speak, right? We, we pause, thankfully, <laughs> we have to stop to breathe. So uh, at least people, even people who talk a lot, they can't talk constantly. All right, so breathe your phrases Think like a, a, fl a flute player or a trumpet player or somebody that's got to breathe into their instrument to create a phrase. So instead of just playing, you know, I'll just use a very plain example. Instead of playing... And that just goes on and on, think about a breath. Even if you were going to do that as your solo, maybe that's your introduction or, or the build-up to some part of your solo, and we'll get to that later about building your solo. But even if you're gonna do that, think about it in terms of a breath. All right, that's kind of one phrase. So, phrase your solos, then uh, think about contrast and form. So we've got form, very simple, like A, B, right? A would be one phrase, B would be a, something different. And you could start to establish sort of a A theme and a B theme. For example, if that's my A, my B might be something contrasting to that, right? Uh, like, all right, two little ornamentation kind of licks. So if I build my solo around those two themes, A and B, I can still play anything I want, but I can always go back to those motifs, right? Sometimes called motives uh, or themes. And if you've studied music at all, you know that music is built upon themes or and variations of those themes and contrasting themes. So let's use that as an example. I'm going to play this um, kind of backing groove that I was using. I'm just using GarageBand and this is the thing called, I think it's called Beat Builder or something, but it's just just to give me something of a background to play against. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to use this idea of an A and a B and just give you an example. Okay, I'm just kind of playing these two ideas. One was the taka tuka taka taka tuka taka, and then do ku do do ku do. Now I so that's what that's what I wanted to communicate with you guys in terms of phrasing, and then using a form, a b back and forth. A you could play a a b a. 
uh, ABA. There's different forms, but let's not get, make it too complicated. Just have motifs or phrases or certain themes that you plug into your phrases. Okay, that's going to make it a lot more interesting. Um, another thing that's really important is creating space. And if you're soloing over a track or with a band, syncopating what you play, in other words, playing some of the offbeats, why? Well, because first of all, you don't have to fill in all the space. We already covered that. Secondly, there's already a bunch of people playing with. If you're playing in a drum ensemble or with a drummer or in a band, you've already got a lot of other things happening. So you don't need to play, and I, I would recommend that you don't play all of the beats that are already being played. Play something that no one else is playing so that you add some interest and contrast to the overall effect, because you've got to think about that too. It's not just about you. All right, that's a big lesson for us musician, musicians, especially us drummers. It's not about us. All right, so what would that sound like? Well, syncopation means offbeat, right? Uh, the notes in between the main notes. It can also relate to phrasing, playing and playing. Um, well, I'm going to get to that in a second. Playing across the bar line or playing polyrhythms, playing rhythms against the main rhythms. So here's, uh, here's what that would sound like. And then we're going to build that up, actually. One, two... So, I'm kind of playing a lot of the off beats, the up beats, the in-between beats. Now, let's take it to the next level. Uh, once you're comfortable with that, and what you need to do to practice that is get out your metronome, not necessarily have a complex beat like this, but get out your metronome, get your click on, and just work on subdividing. And then start to... Get to the point where you can choose any of those subdivisions to play your notes. And that's kind of a different topic than what we're talking about right now. This kind of assumes you can do that. But if you can't do that, go back and do some remedial rhythmic work so you can play. You know, you're playing on those upbeats. Okay. Let's move on and talk about how to use this stuff musically. So we already, we opened with the idea of phrasing, right? Which is a musical uh, way to play. Music and really everything in life, storytelling, everything, is about building tension and releasing that tension. Syncopation, playing over the bar line, playing polymeters, playing things that kind of go against what's happening is building tension, right? In, in fact, the definition of tension is two forces working in opposition to one another, right? So the main force is going to be the beat. If your pulse is there steady, right? And you play with it, you're going to be creating no tension. That would be the release of tension. Doing the opposite, you know, playing those upbeats and playing things that move over the bar line, in other words, that are longer phrases than just the one, two, three, four, that don't resolve into the beat, into the downbeat or the phrase. Those kinds of phrases and rhythms will create tension. So one of the things you can do is use repetition of themes and maybe you have a theme or a, or a phrase that's in an odd number of beats, like three beats, and you play that over and over on top of your phrase of four beats. Okay, are you following me? So you're playing a three beat pattern or some odd number pattern on top of your four four or whatever your rhythm is that's the regular rhythm. Thereby you're juxtaposing things. That creates tension, that's interesting. 
So, but we don't want all tension. So occasionally you're gonna, you're gonna build those things up and then occasionally you need to resolve them. And that, my friends, is what makes music satisfying. That's the payoff, right? That's the big ending of the movie or even just the resolution. You know, it's the kiss. <laughs> all right? Uh, so let's, let's look at what that might sound like. And I'm just gonna do my best right now. I really don't have anything planned for you, but hey, it's soloing, right? You're not supposed to plan it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to build up some tension, release it, build up some tension, release it. Okay, so those are just short examples. I hope this is making sense. Um, and the last thing, we talked about storytelling a minute ago. Um, the last thing, this goes for the whole solo, your whole piece, is tell a story. If you can, you know, start off, your, this is for your whole solo. Start off with an introduction or a statement that kind of sets the tone, right? Decide on your themes. I mean, don't think about your theme. Just play and discover a couple themes in your playing. You know, th these are going to be different every time you play because solos are kind of from the heart. You know, they're extemporaneous. They're not planned, hopefully. So you're going to play some things. That, that's your material. Those are like your characters in your story. And then they go on a journey, right? They go, things happen. There's tension. There's release. There's tension. There's release. There's tension. There's release. But that all develops over time, all right? So then there's some culmination at the end and then you know there'll be a climax, hopefully, some sort of peak, tension, boom, big release, that's your solo, okay? And this, this goes for whether your solo is a solo solo, an individual solo, just you. Uh, it goes for, or, or with a band or with other musicians. Um, that also applies to whether or not your solo is in time, in rhythm, or not in rhythm. You know, having rhythm doesn't dictate whether you create tension and phrasing and a story and themes. All those things are separate from rhythm. But you can use the rhythm, like I've mentioned, to create tension. If you're playing by yourself or you're playing arrhythmically, then you'd play, you'd use your own playing to create tension. All right, so then tell a story uh, throughout your solo. So let, let me do that, actually. I'm going to play uh, a solo uh, by myself, a solo solo, and I will try to, and this is going to be short for the video, for the lesson example, but uh, let's take 30 seconds or 40 seconds or a minute, and I'll try to tell a story with my solo. And before I do that, I want to thank you all, uh, all of you who are patrons of the channel. Patrons means you're a supporter of World Drum Club. Uh, I'm really happy that we have so many subscribers, but we have a few patrons, but we need to have more patrons. So go to patreon.com slash Kalani uh, right when you're done watching this or shortly thereafter, and please consider throwing a buck in the tip jar for the lessons like this one, which would be a paid lesson. Some of the lessons are are not charged at Patreon. You can set monthly maximums of how much you want to support, but I really appreciate it, and it's a way to kind of say thank you and create a reciprocal relationship uh, and say, hey man, I like what you're doing, uh, please keep it up. And that's the way you vote, and you let me know that you like what I do here. So I appreciate that, patreon.com slash Kalani. Um, now, here's a little solo for you guys. Again, thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss anything. And I will see you guys in a future video.